Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. In today's deep dive, I'm going to be taking a closer look at dive knives and just general cutting devices while scuba diving. Now, dive knives are an essential piece of a scuba diver's equipment in case we ever get caught in something underwater and need to free ourselves. In the water, we carry a lot of gear and it's not always the most streamlined. There's also a lot of stuff in the water for us to get caught on, from discarded fishing equipment to just natural elements in the water that you can get caught in. Now, we don't have the luxury of time underwater to be able to untangle ourselves in a timely fashion, uh, and we're in a, a very unusual, neutrally buoyant environment, so things tend to act a bit weird underwater compared to what they would act like on the surface. The main one is rope. Rope is just mysterious in the water. It floats around, it does its own thing, but up on the surface, it just kind of flops on the floor. So being able to cut yourself free or out of your gear is essential. Many scuba divers dive with more than one cutting device on them because if you get that one arm caught underwater and you can't reach your one and only dive knife with your other hand, then you're stuck and you're reliant on your buddy to free you. So a lot of divers like to carry more than one cutting device. But dive knives come in a whole range of styles because different knives have different uses. Dive knives range from large knives like this to small little line cutters like this. And as with most dive equipment, they're a tool for a job. So you need to bring the right tool with you on your dive. So are expensive dive knives worth the extra cost? Uh, and what should you look for on a dive knife? Let's take a closer look at dive knives. So dive knives are the most standard and traditional cutting device and they're the most recognizable design uh, like any other knife. Uh, so it will have a handle to hold onto and a sharp cutting edge on the other side, you know, like a knife. So this style is the most kind of multifunctional and they often have multiple different cutting edges on the same blade so they can cut through both thick and thin lines. So these will have a decent proper handle to hold onto and this is quite important to make sure that you get the right thing. So for this style, look for a really good handle and if you can see if the blade is full tang as well, which means that the metal of the knife continues throughout the whole length of the handle. Full tang knives tend to be the strongest. But knives are the largest and uh, of your sort of options and fewer divers are opting for big Rambo style dive knives because we aren't fighting sharks and octopus underwater like in black and white TV shows. So as long as you can cut through some fishing line or something, then it should do you fine. Most people don't go for the big knives. They just tend to go for something fairly short with a cutting length on it. Cutting hooks are much smaller and they're quickly becoming the most popular design for most divers because in most cases, they're the best option. They're a lot safer because they don't have one big exposed cutting edge. Uh, the actual cutting edge is usually covered up so you're less likely to cut yourself or your own gear accidentally. So how cutting hooks work, um, sometimes they're called like Z knives or line cutters, similar in design, but, um, but what will they all have is a very sharp cutting edge with a blunt kind of cowl section mostly covering it. This means that accidentally bumping something won't actually cut it, but if something gets underneath that protective cowl, it actually gets pushed against that cutting edge and sometimes twists it to create a slicing motion and kind of creates a, uh, a scissor kind of action to cut through whatever does get in that cutting zone. Cutting hooks also exist as a sort of single hook with a, uh, a sort of a blade on the inside kind of cut into it that work in a very similar way but for all of these it's best for like smaller fishing lines just to quickly 
snick through it um, and like relatively thin things because of the small cutting edge and the small sort of access you are actually limited to being um, basically able to cut only what can get into that little notch so it's usually around like a centimeter across if you're cutting through nothing except fishing line that'll do you perfect but if you do come across something particularly thick like a heavy rope that you for whatever reason need to cut your way through then a line cutter it won't even touch it you want something with a long cutting edge more like a dive knife uh, that you can physically saw through it Cutting shears are quite convenient, uh, especially when cutting through scuba diving equipment. Uh, in an emergency, you need to cut someone out of their BCD. The scissor motion gives you good control of the cut and you don't need to like pull or saw through the thing to actually cut through it like a dive knife. Um, and you don't risk like slipping and going a little bit too far. With scissors and shears, you get a bit more control cutting shears they're just that bit more purposeful you know exactly when you're cutting and exactly what you're cutting they do have moving parts though which means that you do need to keep them clean and dry in between your dives so rust doesn't become to form and actually seize that action shears are similar to line cutters they're great at cutting through thin things but for thick lines again these are gonna struggle With all cutting device styles, knives, line cutters, shears, you can find a choice of metals or materials uh, that they're made from, and they all have their pros and their cons. So the standard will be stainless steel, and it'll often be 316 or 304 stainless steel. The number denotes the composition of the steel, the amount of like chromium and nickel in the metal, um, but stainless steel are usually the cheapest choice, but they do bear in mind that these are uh, even the marine grade stainless steel it will rust if you don't look after them steel contains iron which rusts um, I mean I'll cover care of dive knives in a later section but do bear in mind that whilst it may be cheaper initially to buy a stainless steel dive knife if you have to buy a second knife because your first ones are all rusty and blunt then you might as well as just bought the more expensive one in the first place the more expensive choice is titanium titanium is a stronger lighter and more importantly rust proof material but it is more expensive it's not ridiculously expensive but it is more expensive than steel Personally, I like titanium blades because they hold a decent cutting edge and they don't require very much maintenance compared to steel. You can find titanium coated steel and uh, steel with like a black PVD coating. Uh, this makes the knife just overall cheaper because most of the metal that's being used is stainless steel um, and it has kind of the benefits of titanium because the water can't get to the steel to make it rust but do keep an eye on it because the actual cutting edge often doesn't have this uh, protective coating because they ground it down during the manufacturing and if you do scratch the coating anywhere then the water is going to get to the steel inside and it's going to rust. The newest material that isn't actually a metal but it's used on cutting devices is ceramic. So if you've ever broken a plate then you know just how sharp the edge of ceramic can be. Ceramic is light, it's very very sharp, it's rust proof and it's particularly cheap. The only downside is, is that it doesn't like to bend or twist. So an entire knife made out of ceramic isn't practical and they don't really exist for scuba diving but it can be put into a line cutter because they're protected the other downside is once the edge chips or it starts to blunt or dull that's kind of it you can sharpen it to an edge to a certain degree but you should really you do need to invest in a new one so they're kind of it's not, it'll cut through one thing and then you bin it, but if you're cutting through a lot of stuff, then ceramic will sort of wear out, so it's better to go for a metal. 
The actual cutting edge, you tend to get three different cutting edges. Uh, a straight cutting edge, which is just like any sort of normal kitchen knife. Uh, a great multi-purpose edge with a really straight, clean cut. Serrated edges, more like a bread knife. These are better for you sawing through thicker lines, but it's not as easy to sharpen. Uh, and it does give quite a messy cut if you're looking for a particularly clean cut. Uh, a line cutter or a, uh, a line cutting notch. You can often find these on some dive knives and these just have a uh, small section uh, in the metal that just allows you to capture a single line like fishing line and just cut through it instead of using the entire cutting edge. Now the straight edge you'll find on most knives and as I said, it's really the most practical. Uh, it's the easiest to make uh, for the manufacturers and it's the easiest to resharpen if you're good with a whetstone. Uh, but then, yeah, if you do need a tool to cut through a lot of stuff, then you need to go for your, uh, your sort of serrated edges. But if it's only the odd bit of fishing line that you need to cut through, a, a line cutter should do you well. The very tip of your knife will usually be pointed or blunt, or sometimes you can find like a uh, hybrid, which is like a tanto. Most divers are choosing blunt tip knives today, uh, where the very tip of the blade is sort of flat, like a uh, like a chisel or a flathead screwdriver. Uh, blunt tips are a lot safer uh, and less stabby um, so you're less likely to puncture something accidentally uh, or yourself when you're putting your dive knife away and whilst it's never recommended uh, if you are in a pinch that flat head can be used as a screwdriver or a pry bar but do be careful obviously and only ever use it as a last result it is in no way what they're made for uh, so don't be surprised or upset if you use it as like a pry bar or something and it breaks it's not what they're made for only ever use that as a last resort to get yourself out of trouble pointed tip dive knives i've never really heard of a really compelling reason to specifically no you should go for a pointed tip not a blunt tip the only real reason i can possibly think of a pointed tip would be better than blunt would be if you need to puncture a lift bag during a runaway ascent or a bladder for some reason that's about the only reason i can possibly think that you might need a, a pointed tip instead of a blunt tip but that's a pretty rare scenario the Tanto is kind of the best of both worlds. They do have a bit of a point, uh, but they're not particularly stabby, so you're less likely to damage yourself. Uh, you don't see too many of these, though, to be honest. Um, they're quite a, uh, a rare, unique uh, sort of tip, so uh, most people just go for blunt or pointed. And nowadays, more and more people are just going for blunt tip. Where you store your knife is important and you do get some choices here um, and it's quite important to double check sort of how it, uh, how your knife is going to arrive if you're ordering it uh, because you need to bring this kind of sharp pointy thing with you on the dive. You need somewhere to keep it safe so it's not cutting things that you don't want it to. So there are two basic sheets. They're either going to be plastic or nylon webbing. So plastic sheaves, they're tough and they usually have some kind of locking mechanism on them so that the knife doesn't just fall out. Uh, you need to like press a button or like lift the knife away from something or kind of squeeze a mechanism to actually release the knife from the sheath. These do limit how and where you can mount them though, so on the underside of a lot of these plastic sheaths you'll find loops for leg straps uh, and maybe some screw holes to mount the knife to your BCD. Just double check the distance between those holes so that they line up with the grommets on your BCD. A lot of grommets are the same distance apart today. They're fairly universal, uh, but of course there will be that one or two that are just too far apart or too close together to actually mount onto your BCD. Webbing pouches are a lot softer and they do have some kind of movement in them. These usually use uh, Velcro or just literal compression to hold the knife in place and they will have a simple loop that kind of threads over a strap. Sometimes you can get, uh, you can find like a grommet to physically bolt it somewhere on your BCD like the uh, the, uh, the other style, but they too tend to have just that uh, sort of loop that just goes over a waistband or a watch strap or something. 
Some knives do it all for you, like folding knives. Uh, the blade actually will fold away into its own handle so it doesn't cut itself. The downside to these are, again, you've got moving parts. Um, something, again, just to seize and go wrong. And depending on how like tight that bolt is, the knife can sort of swing around. So do be quite careful with these. Uh, they're not particularly uh, sort of popular. You don't see too many of these, but they do exist out there. Ideally, uh, you want the metal of the blade to continue to the uh, the entire length of the handle uh, for strength. That's another reason why folding knives aren't the best because the metal literally can't go down the entire length of the handle. But what you're finding a lot of times is um, a lot of dive knives, they do away with a separate plastic handle. It's just one single piece of metal and you can't get much stronger than that. But if you're only uh, again sort of cutting through fishing lines or something then a folding knife should do you perfectly fine because you're not really putting too much force into it. Where you mount your knife is very much up to you, but there are plenty of uh, sort of places that you can keep your dive knife. So shoulder straps, uh, sort of watch or computer straps, uh, your waistband, either on the waistband itself or on knife grommets built into your BCD. Uh, pockets, obviously, if you have pockets on your BCD or on your thigh pockets, then you can store a knife in there. Just make sure that it's easily accessible and some part of it is attached to your you uh, or your gear in some way so that it doesn't just fall out as soon as you open your pocket. Uh, and some divers still like to mount a knife to their calf or the lower leg. Uh, it's just sort of out of the way that way. Just again, make sure that you can reach it uh, and that it doesn't itself become a snag hazard because yeah, you've got this extra thing attached to your leg. It's quite far away from your hand, so yeah, you don't want that to sort of snag. So a lot of divers, if they are mounting it to their leg, they tend to put it on the inside of their leg, so it's less likely to uh, sort of just get caught on something. You need to look after your knife. Your knife is a tool that you will hopefully rarely use, but when you need to, you need it to work. If it's all rusted up and it's blunted because you haven't looked after it, then there's no point in even bringing it. Before the dive, check the mechanism of any knife uh, that you have, the release mechanism or whatever it has, make sure that it all works uh, and check the mount as well to make sure that it's secured properly. There are no loose bolts or anything. To look after the blade itself, try and coat the blade, especially if it's uh, sort of stainless steel, with a hydrophobic gel like petroleum jelly or like silicone or something. Uh, just something to keep the water away from the metal of the blade uh, and cover the entire thing, all of the metal, and especially where the blade goes into any handles. Rust forms really easily at that join and especially inside where you can't see it. Uh, so you want to be able to keep the water away the best you can. After the dive, get that knife out and give it a wash with fresh water and then dry it properly. Even the smallest amount of seawater on steel can make it rust, especially when it's out of the water because there's more oxygen to oxidize the iron or the stainless steel. You can find some dive knives now that you can disassemble, which is fantastic. You can literally uh, sort of remove the handle and then make sure that the entire thing is drying completely so that rust doesn't form. Outside of that, there's of course the legal consideration of carrying knives when you're traveling. The law is gonna be different whenever you travel, wherever you are. So of course it's best to check your local rules and guidelines where you are and where you're going as well. You don't want to end up in hot water because of your dive knife. But if you have all of your dive gear with you, your BCD, your regs, your fins, and all that kind of stuff all together in a kit bag, and the police pull you over, you should be okay. It's fairly obvious that it's a tool for scuba diving. If you're walking through the town with just your dive knife in your back pocket, then yeah, you could be in trouble. But if it's in your kit bag with the rest of your gear, you should be fine. Just don't go waving around too much in public and read your local rules and regulations. 
So, dive knives, what do you like to carry? I mean, personally, I have a few different options for different uses, depending on the dive and depending on what I come across in the water. Um, but I do prefer to carry more than one if I can on a dive, just in case. But let me know your preferences down in the comments below. Do you think it's worth upgrading to titanium or do you just settle for stainless steel? Personally, I always try and recommend titanium wherever it's applicable, uh, just because in the long run, I find it ends up cheaper. I've bought too many stainless steel knives and now they're just rusty and useless, whereas all my titanium knives are almost as brand new uh let us know uh sort of let's talk cutting tools down in the comments below thank you for watching and of course safe diving